Well, hello there, everybody. How are you doing? I've started it again with the starting soon screen still in the way. Let me get it out of the way. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. It's Sunday. It's 5.30. We got half, we're halfway through a very interesting match between Liverpool and Newcastle. We are going to be talking about this kind of in the back. It's not a watch along. It's a, it's a show. But it's just me at the moment. It might be a person, maybe not, maybe one or two joining. But I want to get to know you lot. I want to I want to converse with you guys in the in the chat today. So I'm looking for some engagement. I'm looking for lots of communication. You know the rules, you know the style. And we're going to be talking through all of the different transfer news as we've got I don't know, I've got like about 15 tabs open with different stories. Different stories, some strong, some weak. You know how it is. How are you, though, guys? How are you doing? Are you doing it again? Are you doing it again? I hope so. I hope so. Let's crack a lack in. Let's find out, shall we, guys? Smash the like button. You know the rules. You've got to smash the like button on the way in. Rule one, when you come in, you hit the like button. Rule two, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We are a few mere morsels away from 16K. It's crazy. The growth has been extraordinary, almost like Tottenham's football. What's going on, people? What is going on? I'm going to make this point right out of the gate, right out of the gate. Tottenham are playing the best football in the Premier League thus far. Tottenham are doing bits. I don't think anybody looks that convincing. They don't. I know it's three games in and you're going to all, people are going to click me and go, oh, look at the early crow. Yeah, fine. That's fine. But am I wrong? Am I wrong? Are, is there a club that's playing better football than Tottenham Hotspur? I would have said Brighton, but actually Brighton got, abs well, Brighton lost yesterday. They, they, they didn't play bad football. I think they had 81% possession. 81% <laughs> possession. And they ended up losing to West Ham, who, by the way, West Ham are looking good. They're looking good. James Ward-Prowse is looking good. Mohamed Kudos hasn't even put, laced up his boots for them yet. They're doing things. If they can keep Paqueta, and they got Kudos, and they got Alvarez, and they got James Ward-Prowse, those two playing in the double pivot, they, they, their back four is not that bad. Kurt Zuma, very talented player. Yeah, they, they got they got some. They got they haven't got a bad team, you know. They haven't got a bad team. If if. David Moyes can allow them to play a little bit, a little bit with more freedom. They could surprise a few heads this year. I'm not worried about them. That's, I'm actually glad that if Kudos wasn't coming to us, I'm glad he's gone to them because I don't think they're anywhere near a threat. But I was, I was impressed with their ability to be dogged and rugged yesterday. And they got some players that can pick goals up. So if they are going to continue to do that sort of thing, then there's 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 every chance they could go away from home and, and pick up little scalps here and there across the top half of the table. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. We've got lots to talk about, guys. As I say, I've got about 15 tabs open. We've got to talk about uh, Bakayoko from PSV. I've had, I've, had, uh, I've had my little thought on him, done my research, and I've uh, got some takes, and I want to hear yours too. Obviously, we've got to talk about a bit more about Brennan Johnson. The links are strengthening with Brennan Johnson. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm not even sure how I feel about it. I feel like it makes sense because it makes sense. It's not it's not a player that I think there's any value in at 50 million quid. He has to be so much better than than he is at what he's not good at to justify that valuation. But the one thing that he's very good at is the thing that Decky is not very good at. And that's why it might make sense. So we'll talk about that. We've also got Stories about Eric Dyer and Tosin. We got Sanchez maybe going the other way. We got Brian Hill maybe leaving too. We got we got things to talk about before we get into it. There's 200 people in the house. Love that. I love to see it. Seven minutes in. Let me let me ask you some uh, some favors. Not just to smash a like. I want you to smash a like. You know you know you got to do that, right? That sh I'm not even looking. I'm not. You know what? I'm not even going to look at the like ratio today. I'm going to leave that up to my man Drew Zilla because Drew Zilla is an absolute legend. He's the absolute chief. Uh, ben, ben might dislike me for saying this. Ben is the chief moderator when it comes to kicking people out. 
Drew Zilla is the chief moderator when it comes to kicking people up the backside and getting them to do what we need done on the channel, which is just the metrics. My like, my videos that I upload every day, you guys are sensational with that. You always hit the like button. The last six out of the last seven videos have had over a thousand likes. It's madness for a 10 minute video with me and Bugsy. And I know why you're liking them because it's Bugsy. I get it. But you know, same, same, same rules apply. Don't ask for anything apart from a like button. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Oh, someone just got elbowed in the face. Gakpo just got taken out. We'll keep a look on that. Are Liverpool going to get back into this game? I don't think so. And by the way, Anthony Gordon, first time he's really impressed in a Newcastle shirt. He looked a little, he looks a little bit like the player from season before last at Everton. Go way back in the Anthony Gordon archives to find a performance like this. Very, very impressive against a really shaky Liverpool team. Anyway, guys, let's say hello to some people, shall we? Because we are 10 minutes in. Uh, we've got Noki in the house. What's happening, Noki? Last week of the window. So much to talk about, mate. So much. So much going to happen this week. It's massive. It's massive. Ian Satwick's in the house. Big up, Sean. Big up, Ian. How are you? And there's me saying do the, do, do the things. Drew Zilla, what's up, everyone? Hope you're all well. Don't forget to smash the like on the way in and subscribe if you haven't already. He knows. He knows. Drew knows. I hope the swimming pool was nice and refreshing for you yesterday, mate. Uh, or day before Friday, was it? Um, yeah, it was Friday. Uh, I hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, where are you? In Arizona, aren't you? Liam's in the house. Big up, Sean. We need Awaniyi a a a -E from Nottingham Forest. Mate, the guy's got bagged of pace. He's an incredible... Like, I, I saw him on that march against United twice in that game when, he was thread when the ball was thread through. I mean, he looks like a, sh a sprinter, doesn't he? Looks like he could have been a sprinter in a different world. Uh, Donovan Osterreich is here. Liverpool in the mud. What's happening, Donovan? Good to see you, mate. The Liverpool are in the mud at the moment. The moment. Newcastle taking their foot off the gas a little bit, though. Let's see what Liverpool can do in the second half. It'd be interesting. For the earth below. For earth below. Hey there, peeps. Good afternoon, mate. Good to see you. Dave Janola's in the house. Big up, Dave. Big up, Sean. Hoping for a very good final week of the window. Please, Levy, give us our Tottenham back. We're starting to get it back, aren't we, mate? We're starting to. Darv's in the house. What's happening, Darv? Spurs fan as well. Van, 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 uh, Virgil van Dijk is washed. Taz in the house. Uh, Amir's here. Big up, Amir. Good to see you. Uh, Elvis is in the house. He's done it again. He has done it again. Oh, Joe Linton put the ball across. Charles for Newcastle. I'm on a bit of a delay as well. So if you're watching it live, I might be uh, I might be like 30 seconds behind. Almiron just missed over the top. Sean, you are a legend. One of my faves. Appreciate that, mate. I'm not a legend. Not Sorry, not a legend, bro. <laughs> but I do appreciate the support. Liam's in the house. Uh, let me see who I've said hello to. Tom Martin, you, you don't want to get to know us lot. It will scare you for life. No, I do want to get to know you. I do want, I want to get, I want to get to know your vibes there. I, I don't often, my internet's playing ball recently over the last four or five days. The reason why I don't do, you know, Saba does those streams where he just comes on and talks like this. He does them every morning at 10 o'clock and he just bangs out like an hour and a half just communicating with people. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant thing to do. I just can't ever do it. I haven't been able to do it because my internet drops. But for the last like week and a half, my internet seems to be okay. Ever since I threatened, I lied to them. I said to them, do you know who I am? I said, I, I am a content creator and I have over a million subscribers around the world. I made some nonsense up like that. I said, uh, if you don't fix my internet, I am going to tell everybody to never, never, ever use Sky. And then they put the phone down on me. It didn't work. But ever since then, the internet seems to have worked. So, white lies. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Did it ding, ding, ding. Tell me lies, tell me, tell me lies. Uh, Drew Zilla, take your shoes off. Yeah, exactly. Ronnie, Ronnie's in the house. Hey, uh, Harry Kane scores again. Good for him. 100%. Well done. You know what? Though? He's part of the past. He's, a, he's just a guy I used to know. He's a guy I used to know. And feel sorry for Sunderland. They shortlisted Ange in 2017. Now they have bottled it. Did they did Sunderland shortlist Ange five, six years ago? Wowzers. By the way, how cool was Ange <laughs> when he was talking about he was answering the question? First of all, what he when he answered uh about um uh he was talking about Mitoma from uh, Brighton, and he was like, Yeah, look, the guy played for university, and he was basically mudding the kind of the the egocentric snobbery of I guess UK football fans who think that you're only good if you come from a big team or if you come with a big price tag. And he's basically saying, nope, 
There's so many good players out there. You just got to know where to look and uh, and have the guts to take a punt occasionally. And then yesterday, he also said in the post match press conference when he said, "Is Madison that someone asked him is Madison a steal at forty five million?" And he was like, "I don't know what world you're living if you think uh, I don't I don't, don't know what world you're living in if you think forty five million is a steal." You just got to love him. You just got to love his absolute raw honesty. It's absolutely brilliant. Um. They were totally outplayed by both Chelsea and Brighton, not coming to us. Yeah, of course. But I've never, they were set up to play that way. They were set up to play um, defensive football, you know. But look, they got the results. So results all that matter. So you could make the same argument about Manchester United. You know, Manchester United, got have, have, I, I would say, have stolen um, four points of the six that they have. The referees have gifted them those points. I, and listen, I, don't, I don't know how you guys feel about Rashford's penalty yesterday, but... It's embarrassing, and then what they did against um, in the first game as well when they when, when Onana took out the player, um, they, they've absolutely been gifted points. They shouldn't they shouldn't have been gifted. Hi mate, he says flat cat beat. Hope you are well, enjoying this season. Last I didn't because they were awful. Plus didn't follow much because it was. I'm not sure he's yeah you, yeah you you enjoying it now because more than yet more than last time. I completely agree, mate. None of these links or. All put together don't make sense. They are too many and scattered. When you take how long we take to close deals, how are any of these going to get done? Well, no, not certainly not all of them are going to get done. Let's hope one, at least one or two of them are going to get done. Let's really hope for that. Let me see what else we've got. I'm, I'm going to start the uh, start the, uh, the going through the links in a minute. Nige is saying afternoon. Good afternoon, mate. 100%. Neil Baz in the house, evening all. Uh, how are you, Sean? I'm good, Nick. Uh, Friday turned into Saturday, turned into a mess. Oh, wow. He went out. He's in Missouri and he went out. He got absolutely... Hamad, good for you, Drew. Good for you, mate. Get, get yourself absolutely. It's bank holiday weekend here, so I'm sure a lot of people right now are out uh, doing things uh, that they shouldn't be doing or doing things that they wish they could be doing more of. You know, not me. I'm just going to sit here with my first cider of the day. First cider of the day. I've got Dave the Irish Hotspur phoning. Let me, let me answer the phone and put him on the speaker. Let's see what he says. Dave, you are on the speaker. You're talking live to 300 people. How you doing, mate? Yeah, yeah not too bad. You silly me. <laughs> if you want to come on, mate, if you want to come on, we'll have a chat for an hour. I'd love to, love to have you on. Yeah, let, I'll send you the link if you fancy it. Yeah, grand, come on. Okay, mate. <laughs> there you go. That's how it's done. You put the pressure on. You put the pressure on and you get a Dave, you get the Irish Hotspur coming on to say hello. <laughs> Let me send in the link. He was, he was he was having a nap. Bless him. He's having a nap at five o'clock in the afternoon. He's going to come on in a minute. Take your time, Dave. Uh, anyone lip read Van uh, Virgil Van Dyke telling the right the ref to f off? Maybe in for a long ban. Yeah, you can't do that anymore, can you, Rob? You cannot do it anymore. We really should be making an inquiry for Gabriel, even if it does nothing but stir it up at the visitors tent at the visitors tented village. <laughs> You really think? I like that, Defo shirt. I like that, mate. Very cool. Martin H in the house. Am I missing something regarding Brennan Johnson? Not impressed to be honest. You're not, miss you're not missing anything, mate. You're not missing anything. He is a one-trick pony. As far as I can tell, And I've, you, know, you know I use the Y-Scout tool. I dig into everything I possibly can. And I was like, the stats look wildly bad. The stats look like he is the worst winger in the top five leagues at doing anything with the ball with regarding distribution. And yet he's 50 million quid. Doesn't make sense. And I went on to Y Scout and I was like, surely the stats are wrong. Surely it's like an error in the algorithm. It's not. It really isn't. Every time he gets the ball, he turns and runs with it every single time. And he either gets dispossessed or he's successful. And then when he get when he's successful, he either shoots or he crosses the ball. He very, very, very rarely ever passes it. Um, maybe five or six times a game. You know, and then he's not very, he's just the, the ratios per 90 are just not good enough. Um, so, but, but, but sorry, just to finish the point though, but he's, he's very good at what he does. And like I said, I think what he does is more in line with what we need, or at least another option. You know, Ange likes options, right? Ange wants to have people that can do a bunch of different things. He likes to be able to make his team look different by the, by the, by the players that he selects. Maybe Brennan Johnson is the antidote. If, if, if Decky's the venom, He's the anti-venom, you know. He's like he does the things that Decky can't do. I still think there's absolutely, you know, a need for Decky. I'm not a fan of him personally. 
And that there's another player we've been linked with today called Bakayoko, who I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but he does everything that Brennan Johnson does. You know what? What Brennan Johnson does, everybody does. It's not, it's not rare anymore to find players that are very good on the on the wide, who, who run, you know, and dribble and take players on and cut in on their left and shoot with their with the inside foot. It's just not a rare thing anymore. It's so it's. Like the days where Iron Robin, Iron Robin was like one of the first guys that I remember doing that all the time. Dribble, 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 take the ball on the left and, and hit it top locker. Like that, that vibe is now 10 a penny. There's so many of them out there. I just don't understand why we would spend 50 million pounds on one who doesn't do much else. So I'm with you, Martin. Zeddy, Sean, thoughts on Poro being way better defensively than Trent? His bulldog stature and pace give him the attributes for it, in my opinion. Mate, everybody's way better at defending than Trent. Trent is an atrocious defender. He's absolutely awful. He's not got any better. The role that he's asked to play at Liverpool is similar to what we're asking our players to do. Inverted, almost sit as a six like into a double pivot. But then, you know, when the ball gets put down the back, Trent does struggle massively to get back. He doesn't know how to tackle. I think people give him a hard time because he's asked to do two roles. And no other player is asked to do that in on, on Liverpool's pitch or in Tottenham's pitch. The guy who plays the right the right back has has a multitude of roles that are not necessarily you can't do both at the same time. So you're always going to give away op opportunities. And I think people that are a bit lazy with their insight think therefore that if if the ball gets over the top, then that then then it's a mistake on the path of the right back. I, I just I don't I don't agree with that in isolation as an individual concept. At times, for sure, the positional play could you know can result in those things being the fault of the right back, but not necessarily just because the ball gets put over the top. And so, you know, to me, um, Poro is far better than Trent are doing it. And but obviously Trent's better at you know the the offensive side than Poro is. Let's not let's not kind of you know, overcooked the goose on the on the Poro love. I think Poro was spectacular though yesterday. I thought he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, he's English as well, says Dave. He is, yeah. This Bakayoko kid from PSV looks the real deal. Look, I'm gonna, I'll get him up now. Let's let's start with that story, right? So that's come out. Um, I've got so many stories to get through. Let me see where it is. Oh, by the way, guys, before I before I uh, get any further, let me get my share screen up. Um. First thing I would I would just say to you guys, I'm not saying this for my benefit at all. Of course, though, if you do want to support me on it, then you can. But the uh, Football Content Awards 2023 um, has got like a week to go of the voting. If you guys are people that watch a lot of content, of lots of lots of football content online, then um, the the link is in the description, and you can jump on to the Football Content Awards and just plug in the channels. Um, or the the link to the channel or the channel name itself that you want to recommend for for the various categories that they have. Um, let's speak. You know, obviously, I'm not expecting anything. I'm I'm relatively new, but um, that there's lots of people that obviously put, put a hell of a lot of time in. So um, if you if you do have five minutes, the link is in the description. You can go and put uh, all the different channels in that you want to recommend for any particular category. And uh, I think it would be cool of you guys to do it, to help people out, to help recognize the people that you think have done a really good job. Um, let me get into this Bakayoko fella, right? So the news came out. I, I only saw it on Last Word on Spurs. <sighs> Where's the link? Can I find it? Can I find it? Oh, you know what? I'm just going to get straight in. All right, so Johan Bakayoko is the latest guy that we are um, that we're linked with, right? This is the guy's stats. He's a he's a left-footed right winger. He's 20 years old, I believe. Plays for PSV Eindhoven, and he is a you know a, if you're looking for stats, absolutely insane, right? He's one of the best uh, on a per 90 basis at all the things that you would want for the Ange system. If you're looking at a decky replacement, someone to sit on the right. People say that he can play on the left as well. I don't think he plays on the left. I think he's very much, or at least for Eindhoven, he plays very much um, on the on the right and he cuts inside and does the same thing that Decky does, but he just does it with a little bit more, I don't know, gravitas. He's a big, strong, fast fella. He kind of gallops up the pitch uh, in terms of progressive carries. There's nobody in the top five leagues that does it more than him. He's in that, in that top one percentile successful take-ons top 5% touches 
in the attacking penalty area, top 5%, progressive pass reception. So he's always playing on the shoulder, waiting for people to put him through, which again would suit us. And again, 16 times per 90. Don't let that confuse you. It doesn't, if, if his number is lower, it doesn't mean that he's weaker. In this scenario, when I see 16 times in the top 1%, what that means to me is that players like Ibrahim Sangare, who are playing in the six for Eindhoven, they are looking for him. When they win the ball back in the, tra in the transition, they are looking for players that are on the break. And for, for Eindhoven, it's going to be him. That's why he gets that number so high. So it's not in what I would take away from that 99 percentile is that he's a, he's a key player for them on the counter, on the break, and he's trusted by his teammates to do it. Um, but yeah, look, he, he, for what it's worth defensively as well, we'll go into a bit more detail. He does look the real deal. You know, the, the, on, in everything that's kind of relevant here, he's up there. He gets the, he touches the ball a hell of a lot in this game. Obviously, Eindhoven players really, really appreciate him because he's passing the ball short. He's in the top five percentile. He's up there. He scores a lot of goals, creates a lot of things, creates a lot of business for uh, for the club as well. But he also gets back, which is really which is really interesting. Most of the time, when you're looking at these sorts of players, they are the sort of players that hang on the shoulder, don't really want to get back and help out the team. He is someone that does get back. Look at this. He's you know for, compared to wingers and forwards, he's making more challenges. He's, he's making at least one tackle in the attacking third um, every two games or two every three games. Uh, which puts him in the top one percentile. He doesn't mess around with his possession stats. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Remember, of course, he's doing this against other teams in Holland, which is not the same. So the question marks are, of course, of whether you can step up or not. What I would say about the guy, look, for me, I'll bring it back. I think the guy is a super talent. I think that there are millions of players like out there like him, though. I've got to be honest. I think there are loads and loads of players that do similar things. You know, Anthony, I'm looking at one right now, Anthony Gordon, who's having an absolutely spectacular game, by the way. He's another player that does these sorts of similar things. You know, there's so many of them out there that just run, drive at the ball, out from the wide. They've got a stronger inver inverted foot on the inside. They can go on the outside as well. They're very useful. I just don't see, if there's so many of them out there, then you don't want to necessarily overpay because even if you miss one this time, you can always find one next time. We got David Irish Hotspur in the house. We're going to bring him in. What's crack a lack? How are you, buddy? All right, lad. How's things? You keep well? Good, mate. I didn't mean to wake you up, but did, did I? Uh, did I disturb your, your nap? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just because I had to. Um, I had to sleep on the couch last night. Not that I'm in the doghouse or anything like that. We just had. Um, Someone was staying over, so um, I ended up having to sleep on the couch last night, and I didn't get great sleep, so I'm tired today. <laughs> Where did you nap? Did you did you have a nap on the couch as well? No, I went into the bed and had a nap. Man. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Fair yeah. enough, mate. Fair enough. Um, how's things, buddy? How how how's uh how's your head after after the the um the Bournemouth game? Were we, were we second in the league, third in the league at the moment? Good times, right? Yeah, look, I'm happy, Sean. Look, you know, I was a big back of Vance, but even I didn't think you'd be able to get everything across this quickly. Um, and I'm just riding the quest of a wave, my man. You know, like we've we, we've been we've been poor the last few years. Don't get me wrong. Yesterday wasn't our best performance, but when you're not playing well and you win games, that's a sign of a good team. Um, are you of the same vibe as I am, though? That whilst everything's looking good, and it does look good. You know, for me personally, I, I think that the defence needs a little bit more credit. I think everyone, I, I know people are individually praising the, like that some of the defenders here, some of the defenders there, but I think as a unit, mm. it's become, it's elevated, it's, there's levels, right? And we've had like, we've leveled up a little bit. And I was trying to make the point on my talk this morning that, you know, it, it shows you what can happen when you look to your left and look to your right and you have mm. confidence in the person that's standing mm. next to you. I don't know, Dave, do you think that there is, three left backs in the league based on current trajectory that are better than Destiny Udogi. No. We've got one of the best, right? We've got one I, of the best. I think we have the best left back in the league. Really? Interesting. Already? Yeah. Yeah, already. Already. Like, you look at that back line, Shawnee, right? And this is... A, I, I know I got onto Dyer about his defending and stuff like that, but I also used to say, if you get a good partnership for Romero you'll see him become an even better player as well. But when you look at it, right, you know, we, we've got Vicario on goals, right? 
last year, Luis was crapping goals. He cost us so many games in the uh, games in the big games. Vicario made six saves last week and helped us get three points. But yesterday, his distribution came to the fore. In games like this last year, when we went to pass back to Hugo, he ended up ballooning it long or he couldn't complete a pass out. He, we could not play out from the back with how bad he was on the board. We also got Van de Ven instead of uh, Eric Dyer. You know, the guy, look at him defensively yesterday, absolutely solid, but on the board. Flipping it over, players out to the fullback, taking charge on it, running through the middle at times if needed. And then also at left back, you've got Destiny Adoja. You're not trying to play with a Session or a Ben Davies or even a Perisic that deep. Perisic couldn't play that deep. With Adoji, the reason why it's working out there is because the guy can carry the ball if needed. He can link up if needed. But also he can pass his way out of trouble. So when you look across that back line, there's three areas that have significantly improved us, which means... Now we can play the ball out from the back consistently. Uh, one thing I was impressed with, as no matter how much Bournemouth pressed us, Sean, we refused to go a long ball. And that's yeah. that, That's what impressed me most, because we could have easily reverted to type and start pumping it long under pressure, but we didn't do it. We stuck to Andrew's system. I completely agree, mate. And, you know, I, I just think that there is so much credit that needs to go. I was looking, I think everyone was giving Van der Ven. If you were going to give someone, if it wasn't going to be Madison, people were saying, who should it be if it's not Madison? Maybe the man of the match was Van der Ven. And I thought Van der Ven was, was, was excellent and the best, the second best player on the pitch in, yeah. in isolation. But if you actually look at the statistics, I think no one was really talking about Romero. But Romero actually won every single duel yeah, that he I had to play. Him, right? He won like seven out of seven or eight out of, out, eight, out of eight ground duels, three out of three or something in the aerial duels. Every time he was asked to intercept, he did. Every yeah. time he was asked to clear, he did. Every time he was asked to tackle, he did. Like in terms of, I think, I think he, he, I think he only misplaced one pass as well. <laughs> only one won. pass. I like sorry. Yeah, and it was a long pass, and it was Richarlison yeah. who didn't who didn't time his jump correctly or time his time his run correctly. Mm. So like, you could make the argument that Romero basically had the perfect game in terms mm. of what was necessary. Obviously, mm. you know, per perfect is subjective, mm. but. Um, Two things on that, uh, yeah, uh, just, just quickly, Sean. I think when you look at Romero, right, he's now our longest serving defender out of what was picked there yesterday. Um, and I think the fact that he's not overshadowed by someone like Dyer, who, you know, had a big say in the dressing room, was at the club for nearly a decade. You know, he, he, I felt like, you know, Romero, I don't think, felt like he had a voice when the guy was around. But now, look at him yesterday, he was... Uh, he was telling people from set pieces. He was organising people, which is something I've been a huge critic of last season. It's something I was a huge critic of of Dyer for last season. It's like people tell me this guy's a leader. Why is he not organising? Whereas Romero mm -hmm. done that. But also on, on, on Richarlison, Sean, that 10-minute blip we had in the first half was because Richarlison's game changed. First half, I actually thought Richarlison was good. I thought he'd done everything okay. right. Just couldn't score. I think on that chance he had, he should have hit first time. If that was game... He would have hit that first time that's in at the near post. But, yeah. you know, when, when Richardson came out in the second half, I'm not sure whether Rand said something to him. I'm, I'm not sure what went on, but it looked like he was dropping. He was throwing his toys out the pram. And any time the ball came near and he kept on giving it away, which meant Bournemouth just turned it over, ran straight back at us. One thing I want to credit Ange Postacoglu and Sean, you will love this because, you know, you asked so many questions of Conte and his substitutions and stuff, which you were right to. Ange didn't sit there and go, oh, look, I need to play the guy into confidence, this, that, and the other. Let's keep him out there. He took him off, made substitutions, put Sun through the middle, changed the game because then we had an out ball. Ball going to Sun, Sun would pop out left, right, you know, and it, it completely changed the game for us in the second half and it got us to three right. points. Yeah, I, can, I completely agree, mate. The, the, only, the only criticism that I really have um, about the, the team performance, I felt like the start of the first half, the start, the start of the second half, um, I think that um, Andoni Raiola changed things up a little bit. And yeah, he, he brought, did. He brought the guy with the dreadlocks. So, is it Sanyemo? Semenyo, that's it. He brought him very narrow. And that guy alongside Philip Billing bossed the midfield for the yeah. first 15 minutes. And it caught, for me, it caught... Uh, you know, Bissouma was a little bit yeah. unprepared for the fight. And I think that Porro was then pinged in a little bit too much. Uh, we figured it out in the end. Obviously, the second goal, I would make the argument it came slightly against the run of play. But 
that after that happened, then it was game over. Like then, then we mm -hmm. we absolutely um, you know nailed yeah. the final the final third of the game. But mm -hmm. I do think we need to be a little bit more wary of um, tactical changes that are happening against us. We didn't adapt, and I don't think it's for Postacoglu to necessarily have to make that adjustment. I think the mm -hmm. players need to figure that out on the pitch, mm -hmm. and then and uh, adjust themselves accordingly in mm -hmm. real time. I don't know if you. I think they. I think they did in the first half. You know, we, we Bournemouth done the exact same thing. You know, it done twist and man mark uh, um, Basuma, and then what I, I I noticed that early in the first half, Madison started dropping out onto the left hand side where Doji was, and then that was our out ball. Second half, Bournemouth went man for man press on us, especially the first few minutes. They just man for man, and we couldn't play out. But any time we did, yeah. and we got the ball to Richardson, he lost it, which meant it was just coming back at us. And when that happens to a team like us, we need our striker to be able to hold up the ball, to be able to get us out on a consistent basis. But no, you're absolutely spot on. I think first half, I think we had an answer for it with Madison dropping in. Second half, we didn't really have an answer for it until Postacoglu changed it. Mm -hmm. And on that note, listen, the purpose of this show was uh, I wanted to get your take on some of these um, of, of these transfer stories. Mm -hmm. So I will, we'll, we'll move on uh, into those things in a minute. But... I do want to uh, ask you, like, did, did you think, I guess it, it leads into the transfer story, right? It does lead into the transfers around what we're going to do this week. It's a massive week ahead of us, mate. Because for me, I think that you look around the Premier League, and I said this at the start, I don't think there's any team that's playing better football than Tottenham Hotspur. I don't think that any of the big teams have really hit the ground running. I know that it's early days and, and things will settle down after, like, you know, game week six, seven, eight. Obviously, then you start to see the, the kind of week from the chuff being separated. However, I think that at the moment, there's about four or five teams that are two transfers away from, you know, having what they need. And I think Tottenham are, and I'm talking about in the top half of the table. I'm not so, mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk with confidence about what's going on with the bottom half teams. I don't know them too well. But um, I think the top half teams, there's probably like Manchester United need two, two, maybe two or three players in. Liverpool, another, you know, I don't know if you're watching it in the background, but... Um, another, another, uh, you know, tough, tough day for them. Newcastle look like they're almost set, but Chelsea still not settled. Tottenham obviously need two or three. Even though our starting eleven looks very good, with the exception maybe of Richarlison mm -hmm. and maybe one other person at the top end, we are still one injury away from five or six different players in that first team. If any mm -hmm. of half of the players in our team get injured, we are like it's like I said it earlier today. It's like a game of Jenga. Right. And you if you pick if you poke out the wrong block, if you get if you mm. knock out the wrong block, then the whole thing comes tumbling down. And I think yeah. Tottenham are one of those four or five teams where if we get the this week correct, we could do bits this year. If we don't, mm. then you know, lady we have to rely on lady luck. And Tottenham will always get injuries. We always yeah. do, everyone does. Yeah. So, you know, to me, I I, I just wanted before we get I, I don't know if you agree with me on that, but also how do you think the substitutions did? Because they are not part of the first team necessarily. Mm. They came in. I think players like Hoiberg did really well. But I'd like to get your yeah. take on him and players like uh, Lo Celso, who I was a little bit mm. more underwhelmed with. Mm. Yeah, look, I agree with you, Charlie. I think we badly need a striker. I've said it all summer long. You're going to sell Harry Kane. Richie ain't your guy. You're going to have to bring someone in here to score goals. Um, you know, look, we've got options. You can play Sun through the middle, but... You know, and and some some will do a job there, but for me, I I, I just I, I just rather us go out and get us that goal scorer. That goal scorer can take us on to an incredible journey this year. I need, I think, we want another centre back as well for sure, because you carry an injury there, you, you you're screwed. You're going back to the same guys that were in the starting lineup last year that let us down. That's had their chances over the last four years. So in order for that not to happen. We need to bring in and another centre back for me. Even if you just get in one, and then you can use a Phillips or a Dorrington as a backup for the other. Because for me, I think they're definitely good enough for sure. But yeah, we're a couple of we're a couple of way, uh, signings away from really giving Ange Postecoglou the, 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 the options he needs uh, across the pitch. Look, if Basuma gets injured and comes out, you're not going to get like for like. You have to, you you know that, that that's going to be a problem for us. But you are going to have to find. A solution to that. But you know what, Shawnee Midfield, I'm not really too concerned about. I think Oiberg came on yesterday. I thought he had another impressive cameo. Look, the one against United, I thought he actually played well until that stupid ball he played. But yesterday, I thought he played very, very well when he came on. The so look, he helped us keep the ball an awful lot. I think going forward, though, I found myself a bit underwhelmed with him yesterday, Sean. Um, and then... 
who, who, who was the other substitutions? Uh, Perisic, very, very lucky boy to stay on the pitch. I thought, I thought we got away with one there. But what yeah. he did do on the pitch really helped us. He just helped help stretch play. He kept us down that other end of the pitch in the latter stages of the game where Bournemouth didn't want to be. And, uh, you know, so for me, I thought Perisic done well as well. Um, Skip, first thing he came on and done was give the ball away. And this is what I keep talking about with the guy. I mean, you know, he, 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 we can sit here and make all the excuses for the guy we want because he's homegrown and want him to succeed. But you can't. we can't be naive to the quality we have in them positions and that this guy's game has to improve. It has to. Unfortunately, look, for me, I'd keep La Salsa and Heuberg. Um, I would keep them this year, but unfortunately, I think Skip will end up being kept because we, we, we need homegrown players, right? That's why we're in the market for homegrown players at the minute. But just because we need Skip for homegrown, it doesn't make it the right decision to make by Ollie Skip in order for his career to be able to develop. He should be allowed to go out alone. It's why Tanganga is still knocking around here <laughs> because of the homegrown. Again, a guy we should have let go out and develop last year could have been some use to us this year if we let him out on loan. We might not have had to have gone out and bought uh, another centre back this summer. So we're kind of cutting our nose off to spite our faces with some of the young English lads we're bringing through. They're not up to standard, but we're, we're blocking them from going out and develop because we need homegrown players. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, but if you're going to let go of Skip, then you have to have kept one of like an Alfie Divine, someone else because of the homegrown number. Mm. If you don't, if you want Skip to, if you see a future for Skip or you want to put him in the window, you should let him out. But if you don't, if you also don't have an Alfie Divine behind it, we just don't have enough homegrown players, right? So mm. there's, and also you let go of Troy, Troy Parrott, you've let go of, of um, obviously Harry Kane and Harry Winks. Mm. All the players we've let go of technically count as homegrown. So it's a, it's a real problem um, for. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, just looking at the Newcastle. Game. Um, it's a real problem for um, for us, it, and and it and it does it does create its own set of issues. Mm. Let me go. Let, let me ask you um, about about some of these stories, mate. The f the first one is Manchester United are looking at Mark Kukurea or Serge <laughs> Regulon as backup to. <laughs> or uh, sorry to come in uh, because they've got obviously a massive problem with regard mm. their left back situation. They obviously have lost Luke Shaw to a long term injury and Tyrell Malassia, and I think at the moment they only have it says it right here. Here you go. Uh, they had to start the right footed Diego Dallo uh, at left mm. back for their win over Nottingham Forest on Saturday. Uh, look. If if this is what they you know if they are looking at, at uh, Mark Kukurea, I think Mark Kukurea will probably be the way that they go. They'll probably pay a hefty a hefty loan fee to get to get them because Chelsea partic don't particularly need him, don't particularly like him. The fans I think he's been an absolute flop so far. But there is an ob obvious chance that if Chelsea say no and see Man United as a, as a real threat and don't want to help them out too much, then maybe they'll turn to Serge Regulon. Obviously, Serge Regulon was also touted to go to Real Sociedad until last mm. week when uh, Kieran Tierney decided to go there instead to Sociedad. What's your take on the Serge Regulon sort of dilemma, mate? It's a weird one for me. And I, I don't really... I'd like to know your thoughts before I kind of um, give you mine. Yeah, look, I've always liked Serge Regulon, Sean. I think, look, the guy's been unlucky. You know, he was loaned out last year to make way for Ivan Perisic. When in reality, the club should have made room, got rid of Session and made room for Regulon and Perisic. But they were playing hardball with Conte. They didn't want that to happen. No, you can have one of what you want. So they, they he ended up being a, a make way. And for me, I thought it was a stupid decision at the time, especially by the club, but also by Antonio Conte, because I knew Session wasn't good enough. I just knew he wasn't. Um, and, and you know, last year we were screaming out for someone on the attacking side. But what was Regulon good at when he was here in the Tottenham jersey? was getting forward, bombing down the wing, you know? So for me, I think he's been hard done by in that terms. And now he's come in, uh, come in again. But again, it looks like because of a homegrown situation, this guy's going to be out the door. Whereas for me, it would make sense to have him as an understudy to a doji. What you want is if a doji comes out, someone like Regulon who can offer the same skill set, who can get on the ball, drive down the wing, who has a bit of pace. Um, so for me, I, I feel like he's been hard done by, but the club have to whittle down the squad somehow. Uh, and th th this was my fear, Shawnee, by not getting rid of 
a lot of what I call the crap players out the door and trying to get it done early. We're now in a situation where we're trying to, we're trying to, uh, uh, we're trying to get money for players for me that there still should be some use for at this football club. But so what, what, what do we do in a world? So do you do you so you, you buy into this rumor that we are probably willing to let him go to, in order to thin the squad down? Yeah. If that is the case, then what happens if Destiny Udoggy gets injured and we don't even know what the sustain what the um, you know, what we're dealing with. He obviously went off injured. Uh, a lot of people on my watch long were saying it was his head, it was his eyes. Uh, then later on, it was something else. It was He felt something in his foot. He hit his foot um, or trapped his foot on the ground. Like, what happens if we got, if we lose Destiny Doggy? For me, that's one of the biggest drop downs in quality yeah. we already have. And I don't think that Ben Davies is... I mean... Ben Davies does count as homegrown, right? So is that what we're going to do? We're going to go for we're going to go for Destiny and De Ben Davies and, and hope yeah. for the best. And Ses you still got Session on there. Let's not forget about him as well, you know. Uh, I know he's injured, but you've got to count him. Yeah, but look, it'll be Ben Davies that'll step in, Sean. But this anyone out there that's watched me over the last three years will know this is what I've always moaned about, given out about. It's like even if you do buy players in, by not getting rid of some of these other guys, and I've always spoke about our homegrown quota being some of the worst in the league. You, you you then you then have a drop off in quality when you want to make these changes, and that's what every man at Tottenham has suffered. Even Pochettino, even when he changed roles out for Davies, there was a massive, um, you you, you know, a, a massive disparity in quality there for me. So look, but this is just this is just the way it is, Shawnee. You know, for me, I'd rather keep regular and have him back up as a doji, but they won't. They, they you know the club got themselves into a massive pickle. They offered a lot of these homegrown players. Massive contracts on massive money, and now Ben Davies tied up to 33. He ain't going anywhere, and the club ain't gonna just turn around and go, Ben, you've got no future, but we'll carry your 85k a week up until you're 33 years of age for the next three years, are they? So, you, you know, this, 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 see, this is my problem with, with those huge squad going on preseason. I said it there and then, this is gonna cause us problems. Everyone's ah, if fans wants, if fans wants, it's like. Look, let's get real here. Let's see the woods, uh, the, the trees between the woods here. You know that 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 that's this isn't what Ange wants. He's had no choice to do it. He's forced to do it. And I, yeah. I, this is why the club should have made a decision just start shipping out Deadwood way back then. Now it's having a knock on a uh, consequence. Where now we're a week left in the window, and we've got so much more to do in terms of outgoings before we can bring in a couple of ingoings because of stupid decisions made by us in the past. Yeah, we are we are still licking our wounds and feeling the feeling the feeling the uh, the heat of um, mistakes in years gone by. Let's hope that you know we we can finally start to clear some of them out. One of those players, mate, and I know how you feel about this guy, but I'm going to bring this the story up. Um, Tosin Adarabio is the headline, but actually the devil's in the detail. Uh, that, and I've been talking about this a lot on my channel. Um, and I think I'm not sure I've seen too much in the way of news regarding this as a potential swap deal, but I've always been a proponent of it that Tottenham are in talks to sign Tosin Adarabio in a potential swap deal. Uh, Spurs have called their interest in Edmund Tapsoba due to the asking price. Adarabio could be a fit, a good fit, and has caught the attention of Monaco. But a swap deal with Spurs is now being discussed. Apparently, as of what I've heard today from Gary Jacobs, I think it was. Um, but Tottenham are actually officially now in talks with. I might be wrong about Gary Jacobs. I forget now. I see. I see so much with his name on it. Um, and that and the, the idea would be that Eric Dyer goes in the other direction. Um, thoughts on this one? Is this is this the best outcome for for us? Is this a perfect way to get rid of one and bring in a better player? Yeah, but I'm not entirely convinced on that. That 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 they want Eric Dyer, Sean. I'm just not entirely convinced on it. I looked at their defensive options today, funny enough, because I was doing thumbnails uh, for getting them prepared for Tuesday earlier on this morning. Because I could, and um, you know they, they they've got enough options there. I don't think they need someone like Eric Dyer. I'm not entirely convinced that they're that they're after Eric Dyer. And from what I was reading, the latest is that Tosin actually. Prefers he wants to go out to Monaco. I mean, why wouldn't you look at the way they live out there? You know, um, tax free. And I well. believe yeah. I believe he wants to get out there. But look, it makes sense for Tottenham. I I I would expect this one to rumble on a bit longer, just like the Brennan Johnson one, because we are in a position now where we're going to have to sign homegrown players. Yeah. 
Um, I like Clawson, though, Sean. I think he'd be a very good backup for us, especially like for someone like Romero. You know, I think he, he offers you the pace that we need in that line. He's good defensively. He's good aerially. He's got a good pass on him. He can handle himself. For me, I'd like to get the deal done. I mean, he's 10 times the player Eric Dyer is. However, I'm not entirely convinced that they want Eric Dyer. I, I, I'm just not. I don't understand who in world football would look at their squad unless they're in the League of Ireland and go, Mm, Eric Dyer is my answer. Do you think, though, big up, Martin? Good to meet you the other day, mate. By the way, I agree with you, mate. It would be an absolute master stroke if we can uh, if we can get it done. Do you do you think that the deal for Tosin revolves around Eric Dyer? Do you think that Tottenham are only interested in him? The reason why I bring it up is because I think that there's other there's other stories here. Like so, there's stories here that we have got to talk about with with Davinson Sanchez. Let me get the Sky Sports thing out of the way. Um, you know, that essentially that Sanchez, you know, he's been on, he's named on the bench uh, and that, that, that there are, there's lots of deals available for him. One of them is being a part of a swap deal or part, some, I mean, like swap deals are notoriously difficult to get done, but they don't have to be part of the same necessary, necessary transaction, but mm. they could be a part of, you know, a general conversation like, like what happened with Winks and Madison. Mm. Um Sanchez or Dyer, do you think that we need them? To, obviously, we need them to move on before we can bring someone in. Do you think that we could bring in Tosin without Eric Dyer needing to go the other direction? Um, I don't think the club will. No, I think they're trying to swap out Dyer for 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 Tosin. However, I just don't think Fulham are going to buy into it. I look at Marco Silva; he wants to play football. He ain't Eric Dyer. Ain't that guy? Um, look, with Sanchez, I mean, the guy's absolutely filled the world. He, he's filled people that he's a half-decent player. So, for me, I think you would be able to sort of cash in on him now. Would you Would you be able to do a cash or, or a swap deal, which I've seen like with Brennan Johnson? Yeah, potentially on that one. I just don't buy the Eric Dyer to Fulham one. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, Soren, I'll bring you in, mate. Welcome to the show, buddy. How, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. Yourselves? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Thanks for coming on. We're just talking about some of the... We're going through some of these news articles that, like, there's so many of them. I've got about another 10, 10 to run through, but a lot of them are the same or similar sort of uh, stories that we've seen before. Mm. But it's the start of a massive week ahead of us, right? There's a, you know, a huge opportunity, I think, at the start of this season for Tottenham to, to kind of to secure themselves into a higher echelon area of the champions at the top of the Premier League. I'm looking at Liverpool and United, at Newcastle right now. They're, it's a 1-1 draw. I'll take that. I'll bite your hand off for those guys to share the points. Um, Tottenham doing bits, but we are only we're, we're fragile, right? Sorry, we've got you know five or six players that are rock solid in our first team, but if they get injured, we're in trouble. We're currently talking about the likes of Eric Dyer and Sanchez. The only way we're going to bring a centre back in is, is if one or two of those centre back issues get removed. You know, what do we do with the Eric Dyer conundrum? He doesn't seem to want to leave. He certainly won't be going on a on a permanent. He wants his free transfer goodie bag next year, so. Do we just have to, you know, maybe sort of swallow that one, leave him in the squad because he won't go and hope that we can do something with Sanchez? But he's also in this final year of his contract, remember? So, mm. you know, what would you do, Soren? Personally, I think if it's the choice of the two, I'd rather keep Sanchez and let Dyer go because um, I think Sanchez fits the system a little bit better. Um, to me, I don't see why we can't try and put him out on loan. Even if we get... A, a minimal loan fee for him and just let him go at the end of the season, Dyer. But, you know, he, he's, he, he's obviously just wants to sit there and take his money and, and, and sort of, you know, go at the end of it. But to me, try and get him out on loan, even if it's just to get his wages off the books, then get him out. But I'd rather see Dyer go and keep Sanchez if it's only going to be one of them than keep Dyer and let Sanchez go. Because I think, Dyer is going to suit the system. Uh, sorry, Sanchez is going to suit the system better. And it does seem to suit his game a little bit more than Dyer. I mean, Dyer is just going to get, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a nightmare if he plays this system. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, to me, you know, I can understand him not wanting to go out now. Well, you know, he, he, if, if he's just thinking, well, it's, it's going to be a big payday at the end of this season. You can kind of understand it, um, but yeah, just just get him out anywhere we can. Just get him out. But do you know what? If if that is the case, 
then he's prioritising his pockets over football and he's forgot why he got into football in the first place when he was a kid. And this is my problem with a lot of these players. Football is not their first priority. They were doing everything they could to protect their pay packet. And for me, with what we've had to go through over the last three, four years, I get what you're saying. If necessary, you know, and he doesn't want to go anywhere, just load him out and mm. get his wages off the book. I, I don't think he deserves that, to be quite honest. But I think we should do everything we can to get him out this this uh, this window. And if he doesn't want to go, then, you, you know, do what Sean said to do the other day. Offer him 40, 50 percent of his wages and then, uh, you know, tell him that there's going to be no squad number there and, you know, that would be helping the Tony the Gardener keep keep uh, up, keep Hotspur away <laughs> for, 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 is, for, for the last year, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah is, exactly. We've got to remember, I mean, as much as it, it's the same as us, it, it's a job for them. It's their wage packet, you know. We, we can't slate them for wanting to get the money because that's what they're there to do. Um, you know, I mean, there's not many footballers do it for the love of the game. You know, I mean... It, it was it was eye opening. Was it uh, Asua Kota came out and said he's just there for the money? You know that yeah. was an anomaly, though. That was an anomaly. Yeah, but is it? Is it? I mean, players players these days, it's it's the earnings. Well, how many how many players have gone to Saudi Arabia before, when they didn't need to? Yeah, for the money. exactly. You know, there yeah. is there is more players these days. It's about the money. You know, I'm not saying that they don't love the club and they don't love playing football, but. They're in it for the money. So let, let's not pretend that, you know, they're not there for the love of the game. So if he's going to sit there and if he's openly saying, no, I just want to take the money at the end, mm. well, at least he's being honest. At least, you know. But, yeah, we, to me, we just get him out anywhere we can because mm. we've got to get that squad number down. We've got to. Mm. Mm. I cannot believe Liverpool have just scored a winner. Are you kidding? Newcastle. <sighs> that makes me sick. I've oh, got to see yeah. that's offside. 93rd minute, 10 minutes. They've had they've had 10 men since about the 23rd minute. Should have I do, been men, really. I do want to say something. I was I was uh, I wanted to address it the other day on the debate show where we had Shawnee and that on, but we did we just sort of ran out of time. But I think Spurs have to be more shrewd now in what they're doing when they're offering some of these fringe players contract renewals and stuff like that. For me, they've done it out of laziness because they didn't want to go and spend the money on some homegrown talent. That's why some of our homegrown players have ended up on colossal wages. Mm. But now we're seeing the back end of it where Europe is broke. They do not have the money and clubs that are interested in these guys, you know, even if we want to let them go for free, you know, they can't afford the sign on fee. They can't afford the wages. And yeah. it's becoming a huge problem. And this is something when Tottenham now went to contract renewals, they're going to have yeah. to be aware of, they have to be aware of, okay, well, look, we're offering you a new contract, but it's a bit of a risk. So, we're going to offer you this amount because if we need to offload you, you, you know, we, we, we can now do it because when other clubs can now afford you. Whereas what we can't do is offer someone like Dyer 80 grand a week again and now the rest of Europe can't afford them. So we yeah. have to now be conscious of that when we go into these contract negotiations from now on. Um, look, it's something I think the whole Premier League need to be aware of, but right, I don't correct. care about the rest. They can do what they want. I care about Tottenham and it's something Tottenham need to be more aware of. The problem is though that as as a club that can't necessarily attract the higher end of the players that we want, you've got to keep giving them this money. And th this is where the problem comes, like you say, that the rest of Europe is broke. So when we want these players to come to us, we've kind of got to give them a wage to make them want to come to a club like us. And then, yeah, you, you, you're you kind of blown it at the end when you, when you can't get rid of them. But the problem but is, is nobody mm. wants these players. Mm. But see, this is where scouting comes into, right? You know, if, if you, you, you've got to do your due diligence now, there's no room for guesses, there's no room for punts, there's no room for laziness anymore. Like the likes of Dyer, Winks, Davis, people like that. The reason why they end up on class of wages is because mm. we just didn't want to go out and, and spend any money on homegrown talent, and now it's come back to yeah. bite us bite us in the ass. But also, we weren't producing enough out of the academy either, whereas. You, you, you know, and for, and for me, like, I can understand if we're going in to, say, buy a player, that we have to offer them decent wages. I get that. But what we were doing is we were offering dire contracts. For what? What has this guy done under Pochettino that he deserved the contract to stay here under Jose? What did he do under Jose that he deserved to stay here under Conte? And what has well, he done under Conte that he's still here today under these co under these contracts that we keep giving these guys? It's 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 
it's, well, we, it's brought, just we, we pulled out the contract. We, we were going to give him a contract, yeah. but we, we pulled but even out to get him up to this point. How has he lasted nine years at this football club? Well, the, the, way, the answer to that is, Dave, that both Conte and, and Mourinho, especially, have both said that he's a great defender. So that's, you know, that's the reason he's still with us. That they sorry, can keep him. Sorry, on that, like, that, like, it's like, it's like what Ange Postacog was saying about Richie in the press conferences now. He has to big up Richie because he's his only senior striker. Yeah. Jose Mourinho and Conte, they came in here, they asked for centre-backs. Jose Mourinho got Joe Roden. All of a sudden, he, he can't ridicule that, right? He can't come out and call him, you know, it, shit. He can't come out and say this, that, and the other. And near the end of Mourinho's tenure, he ended up dropping Dyer because of the mistakes that Dyer was making. That cost him his job. Mm. You know, it's the same with Antonio Conte. Antonio Conte asked for centre-backs. He got Langley in here, and that was it. Yeah. You know, now, we, now that we've... Now that we've gone to a back four, and fair play to Ange Postacoglu, he's just like, look, I refuse to use them at all, at all costs. Now I do maybe wish that Jose and Conte probably would have done that, but you know, like, like we've gone out and got a proper centre back in Van de Ven that's just streets ahead of Dyer. That doesn't really give uh, Ange Postacoglu that decision to make because you're picking Van de Ven all day long, but. You know, we, 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 we can't keep getting into this where we keep keep blaming the managers. The club also have to take a part of the blame because when managers have asked for centre-backs in the past, they haven't gone out and done it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think that's true. But, I mean, a couple of people in the, you know, in the chat are saying nobody wants... Well, we were offered 50 million by Man United not so long back for Dyer. You know, I mean... I was when he was playing centre midfield, though. Yeah, but I mean, you know, what a shame we didn't sell him then. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's you know, it, we can all look back in hindsight and say these things, but yeah, you, you, to me, you know, you, you've just got to, you've just got to try and get rid whatever way we can. I mean, I, I know, personally feel like I think that we're going to get rid of one of the two of them. Yeah, you know, getting, back, getting back to the kind of the initial the initial story. Right? So if we're going to bring in a Tosin, and he looks like. The only name that we're really linked with right now, Pear Shures has gone quiet. Um, certainly, to um, certainly taps over is is dead in the water. They wanted too much money, and all of the noise, all of the noise seems to be that our priorities are always at the top end of the pitch. And I know that we've now got Van der Ven in, and that 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 kind of has deflated the argument because for most of the summer, we spent. 80% of the time, I'm 80% of my dog walks with Bugsy are about talking about Evan Ferguson or talking about Lataro Martinez or talking about whoever is in the next link in the papers. And there was very few updates apart from Tapsoba or Van der Ven. We spent a month going, is it going to happen? Is it going to, I was forced to do clickbait you know, headlines on the whole thing, you know, like, cause I'm shameless FC and that's fine. But the point is that like, that's, it's, this, it's now moving that direction again. You get Van der Ven in, and now it's going straight back up to the top end of the pitch. And I listen, I think that we are equally in need. In terms of a first 11 player, I think we need more at the top end, obviously. I think the only thing we need is a first 11, is a number nine. If we'd happened to have kept Harry Kane, I would be sitting here right now thinking, we, we, we are doing things this year with Harry Kane in there because he would have got a hat-trick yesterday. On Sunday, on, uh, yesterday. We would have beaten Brentford. But... I worry just as much about the depth as I do about the first 11. The first 11, I think we've got, got an ability to spread the, the goals around. But when it comes to the depth, if there is an injury to Van der Ven or to, Taps, uh, or to uh, Romero, we've got Sanchez. And behind him, we've got either Dyer or Ash Phillips. And I don't know, who knows what Ashley Phillips is like. Like people, I know on, on Savage show, I got muddied because 90% of people would rather have seen Ashley Phillips play against United rather than Eric Dyer. And I understand why, because you know how bad Eric Dyer is and you don't know how bad Ash Phillips is. But we don't that doesn't mean that Ash Phillips is good yet. It doesn't know it doesn't mean that he's ready. Mm. And I just worry that if it's not Tosin, and back to the point again, I keep drifting off the topic as well. Like I feel like if 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 it's not Tosin, then where else are we going to go? Because all the other stories are are crying out for a bit more volume, a bit more amplification, a bit more kind of leg like legitimacy, Dave. And I, I don't know, are we mm. You know, if, if it's not if Tosin doesn't want to be here, do you see any other centre back coming in to help out the, the squad? No, I look, I wouldn't write Langley off the cards yet as well. I think Langley is still mm. pushing for a move to Tottenham Hotspur. He, he's no better than what we already have on the bench, though, is he? Like he's he's not the right guy for the squad for the system. Look, I, I look personally I think he's better than Dyer Sanchez for sure. Uh but 
you know, I, I wouldn't write that one off. I think we, we're going to look to get Tosh. And then if we can't, I think we'll end up getting Langley in here. I believe Barcelona want 15 million. Tottenham are sitting there going, eh, no, we ain't paying 50 million because you're only going to release them on a free if we don't. And then Tosin had a chance, or Langley had a chance to go out to Saudi Arabia. He turned it down because he wants to move to Tottenham. So I wouldn't write that one off the cards yet. I still think that's a possibility. But also, at some point, we have to trust some of this young recruitment we've done. Mm. You know, look at Arsenal. They weren't they weren't afraid to bring up the likes of Emma Smith Rowe, Saka, and people like that. And look what they've gone on to form based in and around that. And for me, if we're going to be doing all this scouting for the under 21s and picking up all these youth players. At some point, you have to give these guys a chance. We failed to do that over the last few years, which I think there was no better time to try and do something like that because of the shit that we had stockpiled in the squad and some of the performances we were seeing. I would have given some of the under 21 chances by now, but at some point, you have to trust that recruitment that you've done. Yeah. I mean, and for me, I, 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 for me, I think looking at Dorrington and the start he's had to the under 21s and continuing on from last year, I think all the kid needs is a chance. You look mm -hmm. at Ashley Phillips, he's already got championship experience. He's played championship and a couple of Carabao Cup games for Blackburn. And again, you know, looking at the way he's got off to life on the under-21s, again, he just mm -hmm. needs a chance. It's not ideal to go into the season without a backup for the two we've currently got. But me personally, I'm not afraid to give one of them guys a chance. But what one thing I've said all summer long, you know, is 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 that you need that striker to score you goals. Yes, just that the goals get spread out around the squad, but you still need that goal score up the other end. And uh, it's 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 a complete different ball game putting the ball in the back of the net. It's the hardest thing to do in football. And with the way we play, we we we're gonna need that striker more than what we need another centre back right now. I mean, what I don't get is what why don't we try and go for Gift Oban at thirty million, and you've still got. <coughs> You've still got the money there if, if we need to go and sign an Ivan Tony uh, in January or whatever. Um, you know, to me, that, that's the sensible way. Rather than looking at 115 million or 60, 50 million, 60 million here, there, and everywhere for, for others, to, you, we're in that position now with, with Ange Postacog that getting somebody like Gift Orban would be perfect for us because you've got a manager that's just going to sit there, put his arm around him, and say, You can do it. Give the give you know give a, somebody like that a chance, and if it works out, that's another player for the next five six years. You know this is what I don't get. And thirty million on on somebody that could be a, a striker for the next five six years, rather than one hundred and fifteen million now on thingy. Then I just don't get it. Well, let, let me let me ask you let me ask you guys about that. I'll start with you, Soren. So you're saying gift Orban over look. I put a video out today. I couldn't believe I had to put it out there, but this story picked up a lot of a lot mm. of traction. It started off in the Express, then all the aggregators picked up on it, and then it made its way back into some of the rag tops. And when you get into the rag tops, like yeah, yeah. you have to talk about them as a as a content creator because it's you know as much as they might be ludicrous, you know it is something to talk about. Evan Ferguson, Tottenham are making a decision apparently this week on him. They want 115 million pound or 105 plus 10. I mean, I think it's ludicrous. But just to chump, to, just to crunch through the math, when you've got, when you've sold eight, when you've sold Harry Kane for 90 million quid, give or take, and all of that sits on the books immediately because he's homegrown. He didn't cost us a penny. It all comes on as immediate profit on the books, and you can amortize Evan Ferguson over a limit up to five years. I think it's five years now. I think Chelsea got the Chelsea loophole got shut down. Um, so 22 million, 23 million pound a year is Evan Ferguson. I, I personally think it's pricing in perfection and you never know what you're going to get. The kid could fall in love and lose interest. He could get injured, you know, God knows what, but I mean, I don't know if you watched the game against West Ham, but he had four or five chances yeah. and he was unlucky not to get a couple of goals. In my opinion, I yeah. think the guy is really good, Dave. I'll start with you, mate. Um, Evan Ferguson, twenty-two million a year. If you if you think of it in an amortization thing, does it sound as scary as when you think about the number up front? I'll be honest, Sean. If his name was Evino Fergusino, I mean, people would be clamming for this guy to come in here. The fact that he's the fact that he's Irish, a lot of people don't put respect on his name. But look at, right, for instance, right, a lot of people know more about Evan Ferguson than they do about Gift Orban. But look at the clamor behind Gift Orban. And that's purely because he's he's coming from a different league. He, he excites people. He's got an exciting name, right? 
But yeah. Ferguson is streets ahead of where this guy is at. Streets ahead. You look at Gift Orban, he's playing in leagues where they're very, very open. What no one wants to talk about is when he comes into this Tottenham team, he ain't going to have that space that he's had in other leagues to be able to run at people and running behind. We're playing against low block teams. So then it becomes a good uh, a, a, a question of how good is he with his link-up play? How good is he with his feet? How good is he at moving the ball in tight areas? No one's talking about that. You How know good what is I mean? His head. Orban doesn't score goals with his head. He's five for exactly. ten. Exactly, but Johnny, it, you know, when we're coming up against these low teams that are going to sit low block against us, we have to have a player up front that offers them different skill sets as well as scoring goals. With Evan Ferguson, look at that move he done yesterday. One foot, two foot, got the shot off. You know, he can control the ball in tight areas. He can manipulate the ball in tight areas. He can head the ball. He can shoot. He can hold it up. He can lay it off. For me, you go and sanction the money on someone like Ferguson. Not 100 million, way, way too much for any bloody player. I wouldn't sanction it for any player. For me, I think you could easily get Evan Ferguson for 50, 60 million if you stumped yeah. up that cash, which nah. we have from the... Yeah, from will. the. I think nah. you will. Not I think Brighton, you will, personally. Bright, Brighton, Brighton have got some sort of magic dust where they can just name their price and people seem to pay. Yeah, but everyone exploits Chelsea, Sean. Everyone exploits yeah, Chelsea. Well, I mean, player. I kind of agree with what you're but saying. Why aren't, there. Why aren't, sorry, why, sorry, I'll, I'll let you come in right now. Sorry, no, no, but take, take my oh. question on board. If everyone exploits Chelsea, why aren't Chelsea, who need a number nine as well, going in for Evan Ferguson? If they're willing to pay 115 for Caicedo, mm. why aren't they willing to pay 115 for Evan Ferguson, Soren? Is it because he's not worth it and he's nowhere near that level of a player? I, I, I mean, I agree with what Dave's just said, but it's just the price tag on him. He's not a £115 million player. He will if, be not. If we was talking £60 million, then you kind of say, right, yeah, you know, that extra £30 million between him and Gift Orban is... The, the, the fact that we know he can play and we've seen him doing at a higher level. The only the only argument I've got against paying if we're talking 115 million for him is mm. if we pay 30 million for Gift Arban now and it doesn't work out, we've got 70 million to put towards Ivan Tony in January. That's the yeah. way I look at it. And if, if it's a toss up between him and Tony, then I personally I would say Tony suits us very well for the system we want to and if we can get him for that money. We've then got two players for the same money as 115 mm. million for, you know, mm. a guy that. According to this, according to these reports, mate, um, Tottenham Hotspur will reportedly make a move for, to sign Brentford striker in January, but his price tag then will be a hundred million pound. Um, this is from Team Talk, but they're Team Talk are irrelevant, but they are referencing uh, Football Insider. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I should probably. Should probably stop talking if it's football insider. It's not worth mentioning either. <laughs> just just yeah. on, on 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 the Ferguson or on the striker situation. For me, I think look, sanctioning thirty million on 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 a gift or banner, even if you go and pay for Evan Ferguson, right? You've already got a lot of young striking talent at the club that we've brought in over the years. So if if you're going to go for one of them, why not give Elise a run? Why not give Donnelly a run or someone like that, right? But on the other hand, you know, this is one we have to get right. You know, we've had Harry Kane for over for, for a decade, banging goal after goal after goal. And we, I don't think we realised how lucky we were to have him until we've seen how bad Rich Allison is up front. But what you're seeing around Europe right now, and the reason why there's a premium on all these strikers, the reason why there's a premium on Alfred Ferguson, is because having a striker like that who can play up front on his own is rarity nowadays. You know, it's absolutely rare. That's why the premium on these guys have, have, have gone up. When I was growing up watching football, every team had four strikers, all score goals. Now it's a rarity, you know, and people got pretend like, oh, well, it's the new way of playing, you know, it's the new oh, era. Yeah, the 4 4 2 has changed, it. isn't it? It's not, it's not so uh, much Yeah, but they're like, Sean, anymore. oh, pepped on it. Okay, yeah, pepped on it because he couldn't get Harry Kane. And then the following season, he went out and spent money on Halland. So that shows how important it is to have that goal scorer in your team. Someone that can lead the line up front, that can hold up the play, that can that can spray the ball, that can control the ball, can shoot, that can basically run that line on his own. They're a rarity. That's why there's a premium. And for me, Tottenham will want to get ahead of this. So they need to be looking around and, and going and getting that guy. Because if not, there'll be a clamour of clubs looking at it next year. If Hoyland doesn't work out at United, they'll look to go again. If Jackson doesn't work out at Chelsea... They'll look to go again. All right, Ashley, let, me, let me ask this though. Is Evan Ferguson going to be more than £115 million in a year's time? Even if he bangs in 20 goals this season, how how big is his price going to get? Or have they priced in perfection? 
look, Irish players are always notoriously uh, sort of priced low in the market anyway, Sean. They don't really uh, carry a lot of value in, in, in this sort of market. But look, for me, I think Ferguson is one that's cert going to make it. You've heard me talk about him for quite some time, Sean. Um, I think he's cert going to make it at this level. He's going to score goals. Look what he's already doing at 18. A lot of the pundits are already saying, you know, he's very Harry Kane-esque and everything. No, he, no, he, will make, he will make it. I'm just wondering... What is the price tag going to be in a year's time if he scores 20 goals this season? Is it, is, it, is it going to be 150 million? Surely not. Right? Or, or any striker that scores 20 plus goals, any striker that scores 20 plus goals, we're 100 million now because they're rare. Yeah, but it's not going to go any higher, is it? That's the thing. I mean, look, I mean, to me, we've got to look at it like this. How are we that desperate for a number nine goal scorer when? The way I just set this team up, there are going to be goals from all over the park. It's not as necessary for us to have that Harry Kane figure as 30 goals in the centre because if we stop leaking so many goals, we don't need to score as many goals to win the game. If we're going to put them goals all over the pitch, then we kind of don't need... I mean, to me, you put Sonny in the middle, or you put Rich Allison and, and Poro on the right, you've got... Perisic on the left, we, we've kind of almost got it. That I mean, if we're that desperate, put put Richie back on the wing and put put Sonny down the middle. You know, there are there are ways to score goals in this team. The way it's looking, I mean, don't get me wrong, an injury or two, we're, we're talking a different scenario. But it, to me, we, we would be better spending that money at the back and the midfield, making sure we are as solid as possible. To stop leaking goals. Oh, so you're okay. So you, you, you're thinking we're good up top. You think that we trust him? If, if we're not going to, I mean, to me, I, I don't see the point in spending a hundred million pounds on a striker right now. When even if it wasn't a hundred million quid, right? If you went to Brighton and said, "Well, look, so here's here's the here's the here's the art the, the different argument." Let's say it's not 115 million. Let's say Brighton a bit more reasonable, and they say, and we can go to them and say, "We'll give you 70 million plus. We'll give you." 20% of the sell-on. Something like that, right? If you believe that he's going to be this worldy, then we'll give you 20% of what we sell him for in the future uh, in perpetuity, right? If it doesn't matter if he, signs a, if he signs a second contract with us, whatever. If that's the way you can get it done, if Brighton are okay with that, 70 million on him now or 70 million on Ivan Tony in January, what would you guys rather see? I think it's a toss-up personally because... I don't, like I've just said, I don't think it's quite the urgency to get that big goal scorer in right now. I think we've got time to just sit and wait. And it's not very often, as a Tottenham fan, we can say this. But the, I, I honestly think we can just sit and wait, depending if we're good. If, if somebody said to me, right, you've got the choice of another decent centre-back and another midfielder if we're going to get rid of any of our midfielders. I would go that way rather than the forward because I think we've got enough up front and there's a whole team now, the way we're playing, to keep nicking goals like we have been. It's, but it all depends. It all depends on injuries. That's the problem. I, I hear I the argument. I hear yeah, the yeah. argument. But, I mean, we've done this all summer long. We don't need a yeah. striker. The goals come from everywhere. Oh, people agree people, with you, sorry, by the way, mate. Not people, people ignore. Not very often. People, <laughs> People ignore that he had Furuhashi who bagged 28 to 30 goals from up front at Celtic. He needs that striker. It's the difference between the project going as far as it can and the project being a, you know, a, a sixth-place project at best. He needs that striker. He needs someone to finish off the moves. Against Man United, we got away with it. If they, if they took their chances in the first half, you're talking about a whole different ballgame. We, you know, we finished inferior on XG uh, on that game. Same against Brentford, finished inferior to them on the XG. Bournemouth, if they were, if they had better players going forward, they could have, you know, created a couple of chances. We had to make a change to take Richie off to go and take this game away from Bournemouth. But if you've got a striker up there who's already banging in the goals and had the chances for Charleston had against Brentford and against Bournemouth, them games don't become as tricky. Them games don't become as close. You take them games away from your opponent. We do need a striker at this football club. Everyone said we don't need one. Now we've sold Harry Kane. Now everyone's sitting here talking about Spurs need a striker. Let's no, get real. We I need strikers at Tottenham Hotspur. No, Dave, I don't think it's a case of not need. I what I'm saying is though, he, to me, if we put Sonny up front, he's going to score more. He's going to he's going to put them chances away more than Rich Allison probably does. And 
you, you've got the players around that front area that can take us till January if we don't get the, the, the striker we need right now. What I'm saying is, though, if we say if we lose, um, you know, Madison, if the Celso go, when we're absolutely stuffed. If we lose Van der Ven or Romero, we're absolutely stuffed. To me, we're never going to get all the players we want in this window. So to me, we get the players that are available. Now, if it's a striker, it's a striker. But I would rather see for once we go out and we get another defender and we stop leaking the goals. That's the big thing we need to do. We stop leaking those goals. Now, it, it, hopefully it's only going to get better at the back because mm. two or three games in, we've scored. We've, we've got seven points out of three games, which, let's face it, before the season started, after that pre-season so we were all worried about what was going to happen. Yeah. It was either going to go like this or we were going to have lost all three games. We've actually won and we're looking we're looking like we're playing, you know, mm. all the chance on Saturday we've got our we've got our Tottenham back. That's the way all mm. the fans are starting to feel. The the players are believing in mm. what's happening. As long as that keeps going, we can get through to say January. Now if that means we buy a striker in January, we, we buy a striker in January. But well, clubs don't sell in January. We know this. Clubs do not sell their best players in January. It's always a nightmare, isn't it? Every even yeah. the even the windows when we all think, oh, it's because of the World Cup this time around, it's going to be monster. It never is. No. It's well, never. I mean, every every to... January window is such a dead rubber affair. It's, yeah. Uh... Well, Sean, we've got to. I mean, you know, we're all going to have different opinions. We've got to work mm. out what the priority is in this window. To me, the striker. At the moment, isn't necessarily the priority. But if, if we lose any of our first, I mean, and again, if we lose Sonny up front, if we look, you know, if we lose Richardson, it's not that big a deal at the moment, is it? But if we lose Sonny up front, then we're stuffed. But, you know, people okay, say. So, about so, so, so if, if the conversation is spending whatever's left of the budget on one forward, one striker, or getting some. Cheaper options that can just level up the, the the subs bench a little bit, then I would agree with you. I think I do agree with you that we've got more depth at the top end than we do anywhere else in the especially in the back. I think the midfield we can we can we can cope personally. I, after watching Hoybier coming off the bench yesterday and shore things up to the point where they had to take off Semenyo and yeah. uh, and Philip Billing right, like because their game was their game was run, their game was dead. They they, they put everything they could into it. Hoybier comes on and just smashes them, smashes into a tied version of those two. And that was it. At that point, the game, I was like, I'm comfortable now that Hoybier's on the pitch. So I'd like to keep him as long as he's willing to play that role. You know, in, on occasion, he can start, but generally, and it, for injuries, but generally speaking, you got you got to fight for your place. At the back, I think we've got one of the best. I think we've gone from having the weakest defence in the league, arguably the weakest, to I think now, as, in terms of a starting four, I, I don't make the argument we were top four, uh, starting four, right? Top four. Mm -hmm. on, on, like, I think Udoji is just a world, a game changer for us. I don't think that there's too many better left backs in European football, let alone the Premier League, than what he's done so far. I think he offers us a bit of everything. And I think Van der Ven has been an absolute game changer. And I think Romero has taken to this leadership role and stepped up. Less clumsiness, less rashness. Mm -hmm. He smashes everything in the right way. I hope it doesn't change. Obviously, it might, it might just be a little bit of good form. We've seen it before. Let's mm -hmm. hope he doesn't regress back to the lunatic. And I think Pedro Porro, to be entirely honest, has has seen the, the rise up of Emerson. And Emerson stepped up. And I think Pedro Porro, the prisoner, the prison warden, the prison guard, whatever you want to call him, has he's such an absolute monster, like a mentality mm -hmm. monster. He's gone... This is, I'm going to figure this position out and mm. I'm going to smash it. And I think he's put me in the mud and I think he's put half of the fan base in the mud who didn't think he could well, defend. Not me. Not me. Happy. The thing is, though, Sean, if you remember I me, mean, not you, not going you, Dave. Back, no, going not back, you. back to last year, <laughs> what we were all saying that as a team, we had no defending from the front. There was no help for them defenders. Whereas now there's all the closing down. And rather than having two in midfield, we've almost got five in midfield. We're, we're stuffing the game. And that's why we're now seeing our defence look more solid. Now, to me, if we've got 100 million to spend, Evan Ferguson or somebody like a Gift Orban and maybe a Tosin, I'd rather go the Gift Orban and Tosin route. Then you've got two players in. You've, you've shored up the defence mm. a little bit more. 
we've we've got that option of of gift Oban. And to me, it's we, we we said this with other teams where you've got that young, hungry team that there's not necessarily any world beaters in there, but everybody's playing because they all believe in what's coming. Mm. Look, uh, first of all, I think it's unethical of Sean to make us pick between either or, to be honest with you, Saren. You know, as a football club, I believe we should have... Uh, <laughs> I, was about, I, was about go, I was about to go for a wee, but then you call me unethical. What? Say that again. <laughs> I, said, I said, I think it's unethical that you make us pick either or, Sean. You know, I get... <laughs> you know, as a football club, we, 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 we should have both. But look, in all seriousness, as a football club, What's the ambition of the rebuild? How far do you want to push it under Ange? Go for both. Go for a striker and a centre back. They're your two problems, uh, your two weaknesses where you need cover. I get what you're saying about the forward line starting about the cover, but for me, we've only got cover on the um, on the wide areas. If we lose Sonny, we're screwed. You know, Sonny's been influential down the left hand side, and then both games against Man United, he moved Sonny into the middle first. As soon as he done it. We went and got the second goal because Son laid it out to Madison and he was doing what Richardson wasn't doing it. But then also against Bournemouth yesterday, he moved Son into the middle and we went and got the second goal and killed the game. We can't mm. keep relying on that because what you're doing is you're moving Son from out left where he's been influential into the middle. But if you lose Sonny, you're screwed. You're absolutely yeah, screwed yeah. up the top end. I mean, the thing is, though, Dave, with that, moving Sonny into the middle and bringing Perisic on, you, you're bringing a player in there that seems to be able to do the job now, you know, mm. compared to what we were looking at last year where he hasn't got necessarily that mm. defensive role. It, it's suddenly working and we're seeing what Perisic can do. Now, I don't know the answer with, with Richie. I mean, I'm not as critical. I mean, don't get me wrong, that second half was just shit, but um, I'm not as critical of him as a player as what a lot of people are. Mm. But to me, I just think, if he got his confidence, I don't know how he's going to get it. He, he just doesn't seem... Yeah. Then we're looking at a different player, but I, I don't know. I just think we've got enough up front not to make it such a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I mean? The, the problem I'll, I'll, now is yeah. that all of a sudden Daniel Levy's sat there looking and thinking, we don't need to sign any more players. Look how good mm -hmm. we're playing. Rather than damn, let's mm. back this manager. You know, let's hope mm. he goes with, damn, let's mm. back this manager because mm. we can all start to believe in something mm. that we, you know, I don't think, I mean, don't get me wrong, you're always going to get those fans that are going to be downers, but there's not many Tottenham fans out there now that aren't looking at this thinking, do you know, we're going to do something mm. soon. Mm. That, you know, we're, we're all excited. Mm. Let me ask you guys, um, quick fire round, right? Because there's, uh, I, I don't want to take up too much more of your, your time. Um, and I want to just fire through. There's five, six stories here that I want to just remind people that are still percolating in the background. And I want to get your takes on them. Um, I don't think any or one of them is a forward uh, or a striker. The rest are forwards um, or midfielders. Let me start with uh, this one. Um can I, am I sharing it yet? I'm not sharing it yet. Here we go. So the story that won't go away, Eberechi SA, 90 minutes have revealed that rumoured Tottenham target Eberechi SA has turned down a new contract offered by Crystal Palace earlier this summer. Um, obviously, there's a big deal maybe happening with Ducore that might be a, a monster earner for Crystal Palace. And so... Yeah, that might change things. We thought that the SA deal could be more likely when Elise was some signed the new contract, and that 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 kind of uh, that deal that was going to take him to Chelsea broke down. Um, super quick, I'll start with you on this one, Sorin. As a A, do you like him? B, do you think it could happen? C, uh, do you think he in his role is a priority um, at this moment? Yes, I'd love him. No, I don't think we'll get him. If we had a chance of getting him, you can't turn it down. There. Is that quick enough? <laughs> it didn't need to be that quick. I'm just, I'm, look. <laughs> I mean, I'll, give, I'll give you like a minute a piece on each, on each player. Right, yeah, like, um, what, what I have to say, yeah, of course I would. You know, I mean, did, who wouldn't? You know, who, who wouldn't want Eze in the team? But again, if we got Eze, to me, it's... where does he where does he play on where does he play for Tottenham? He's not sure a problem. He, he, he'll play full stops. He'll play somewhere, won't he? Um, well, ahead of Sonny, 
No. Sonny's the captain. Ahead of Madison? No. He doesn't play on the right, so I don't know where he plays. Well, it depends whether you move. If you put Sonny down the middle, then yeah, he can play in Sonny's position. So you okay? So if we were to sign him, then that okay, fair enough. It's a good point. It's a good point, Dave. Yeah, Dave's yeah. already thinking of as they're coming, so he's turned his camera off. <laughs> There's your answer. No, I'm just having, I'm just having a, a, a naughty quick cigarette. Uh, look, for me, I like Eze, right? I think he's a good player. However, I don't think Palace are going to let him go. Roy Hodgson is already complaining about his lack of options in the forward areas, and they're after letting Zaha go. And Eze is their top scorer from last season with 10 goals, but he's also their top chief creator of chances. So for me, if Palace let him go, they're relegated. I don't think they're going to let him go at all. Morlar's asking a question here. Um... He's not. He's not making the the assertion that I am. But is there any way that you could see? Does Lo Celso just want to leave England and get back to sunnier climes? If not, could there be a deal where you could see Lo Celso going back and being a mainstay in Crystal Palace's team? He lives in London. Lo Celso, obviously, you know, he's not renting anymore. Oh, he's got a house here, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he's a lad. Are, are we sure that the, all this around Lo Celso wanting to go is true, though? I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know, mate. I've read so many rumours saying he's he's miserable, he's unhappy, he's angry about broken promises, and I see other people saying all that nonsense was untrue. I don't know. I'll tell you what I didn't do know. I thought he played really well in the preseason, but when he came on against um, yesterday uh, against yeah. Bournemouth, I thought he was yeah. irrelevant. I thought he was entirely irrelevant in that, in that last 20 minutes. Just, yeah, but he, I mean, he only had 20 minutes in a game that we were trying to calm down, didn't he? So I think it's a bit unfair. If, if you bring him on when we're you know, when we're full out going for it, then I think you see a slightly different geo. But um, yeah, true, true. As it's not going to be fifty million. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate, hundred percent. Um, so, Dave, you're saying what you're saying? Yes, but not unlikely. Yes, but Palace won't sell him because if they do, they're getting relegated, and they know that he's their biggest uh, out uh, source of goals, top scorer from last season, and biggest creator. They sell him, they're relegated. It's that simple. They're after letting Zaha go. They're not going to let him go. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Take that one. This one is an, a, a new rumor that's come out today. I spent about an hour looking through this guy on the Y Scout. I did speak about him briefly at the uh, at the start of the show. Uh, Johan Bakayoko for Eindhoven. Um, just to recap the people that have been here from the start. Personally, for me, I think the guy is um, he's very exciting. His stats look phenomenal. Uh, but to me, there's a gazillion players that do exactly the same thing as him and exactly the same thing as. It's just a typical, typical winger who sits on the sits on the outside. Is very good at dribbling, good at passing, cuts inside, looks to shoot off his left. Um, I'm okay with it, but I don't know enough about him to really give too much of a of a breakdown. I don't know, Dave. Do you know much about Johan Bakayoko that no. that you can give an insight? No, no, no. sorry, no, neither. No, I, I I don't know enough about him to make a comment. Um, and yeah, so. I'm Looks a really good player for what it's worth. Yeah. He looked what he does differently. What I like about him, he's, he's obviously he's built very big, very strong, quick. Um, when he cuts in, he takes his shot early. One of the things I, you know, that, that Decky does that annoys me is that sometimes he doesn't, he hasn't got that kind of like, I'll, I'll tuck to the left and ping it straight away. But this, mm -hmm. this guy seems to like know what he's going to do. He knocks it, and then the next stop, the next hit, the next footstep mm -hmm. is to plant his foot for a shot. Mm. Uh, and he's he's quite successful with it, but again, don't know enough about him to really give anyone uh, anything deeper than what I've seen. But does look a good player. But I'd say the same thing about fifty players that play similar roles yeah. across the European leagues. Um, let me move on to this one. Uh, this is this. I don't think this has been recycled by Spurs. Where there's nothing new to it apart from uh, the story's still there, and I haven't got your two opinions on him recently. Jonathan David from Lille. The noise won't go away. 50 million quid. I can't stand the play. I don't, sorry, that's, that's a strong word. I, I, I just don't think he's, I think he's massively overrated. Um, mm -hmm. Sorin, Dave, do you, uh, I'll stop with you, Sorin. Do you know much about him? Do you, do you follow um, him? Do you, do you think I've of seen him? a little bit of him. I won't say I'm an expert on him, but I don't think he's a bad player. I just don't know. Because it what, was he rated at 50, 60 million? Is, have, I, have I got that price right? Yeah, that's the number, yeah. yeah that's I the mean, number, yeah. For me, if I, if it was a choice between him and Gift Urban, I'd go for Gift Urban at half the price. Um, you know, we're, we're, as I don't know. I mean, how how good a league is is the French league anyway? So, you know, that, that yeah. look at how many French players we've had and they've just dropped. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 
to me, if it was if it was the same price as Gift Urban, then I'd maybe kind of look at him more. But I think I'd rather have Gift Urban for that money. <laughs> Dave. Um, look, partially, I think he's overrated. I think he's exciting up to the final third. But, uh, you know, look, again, he's one of these players. He thrives in the French League because there's a lot of space for him to run at people. Yeah. What we need is players that can hold hold balls in tight situations under pressure. And I don't think he's that guy, personally. Um, guys, we are 12 likes away from 300, according to what I can see. There's been about, I don't know, it must, it must have been a couple of thousand people that have come through here and they haven't hit the like button. Do me a favour, we should be on at least 350 by the time the show ends. Get us up to 300. Also, I'm going to be putting Dave's and Soren's. Oh, I know Soren doesn't have anything, but Dave, I'll be pump, pumping your channel a second. Go over to the Irish Hotspur. I'll be putting his link in the uh, in the chat as well. I wasn't expecting him to come on immediately. Um, guys, next up is uh, this man right here. Jota from Celtic fame. He went over to Saudi Arabia. This name is seems to be coming back. It disappears, it comes back again. He he went he went over to Saudi Arabia. Something's happened over in Saudi Arabia. It's not just with him, it's with the club Al Itty had. Mm. But a lot of players want out of there, from what I've read. I need to get rid of that that ad. Um the report claimed that Josh was available on a loan deal just weeks after joining Al Itihad from Celtic. Tottenham have been alerted to the availability of the 200 grand a week uh winger. And they're considering signing him, according to the report. Italian journalist, uh, journalist Ruda Galetti is now reporting that Italy had head coach Nuno wants Jota to leave. Um, I don't know if you saw also that Nuno also wanted... Didn't he also want... Um, uh, who was the, who's the French superstar that they signed? Uh, uh, Benzema. The guy from, ben, who was yeah. it? Benzema, wasn't it? Benzema, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did he, I saw yeah. rumours that they, he also wanted Benzema. I don't know if Nuno <laughs> is after that golden goodbye handshake, you know, he's after that sacking mm. or what, but uh, he doesn't want Jota, apparently. I don't know if there's any truth to it. Um, Dave, I'll start with you. Jota, is he a uh, a player that you think, is, is this just like tangible links because of the relationship uh, with Jota and, 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 and Postacoglu? Any truth to it apart from that? Yeah, look, I think them links are definitely coming around because he had them at Celtic. But look, at Celtic, you know, Jota Jot done well for him. He'd he, he done exactly what Ange Postacoglu wanted him to do. And for me, you know, that guy could have got a move to any one of Europe's top five leagues out of the Scottish League. I'm surprised he sold out and went out to El Had, And that sort of makes me question his, his ambition in football. So for me... Personally, because of that, I would stay away. He looks like a guy that prefers to take the bag then look after his football career or has look after his football and ambitions. The bag outweighs the ambition. So for me, I'd be very wary of players like that. And we've had enough of them players over the last few years. Personally, if it's if it comes for a cash deal, I would stay away. A loan deal, look, maybe I'd take him in. However, we've already got Sun there. We've already got... Um, uh, Perisic, we've got Gill to come back. You've got Solomon and Kulu for the other side. We're stacked on either side of the wings. For me, personally, uh, it doesn't really solve a problem for me unless you bring him in and your the idea is to move Son in central. Mm. Interesting. Defarshar is saying uh, it might be something to do with the foreign player allocation limitation and they, they prefer to have Salah. I mean, isn't that ridiculous? They go, oh, we've, already, we've already paid you a lot of money. But actually, we've actually found someone else who can do who's a bit yeah. of a bigger name. So we'll let you go. Crazy stuff uh, for you, Sorens Jota. Would you uh, take him? I, I mean, I'd take him, but I'd take him if Ange wants him because Ange knows whether he's going to play his system and he'll fit into mm. our team. So if Ange, if Ange turns around and says he's the player we want, then yeah, you know, you go for it because he knows what he's getting with that one. And you've got it's a bit like Conte bringing Perisic in, isn't it? That You've got a player that knows that system. You've got a player that, you know, has done that system before. So mm. it, it kind of makes sense that if, if Ange turns around and says, we go get him, then, yeah, to me, we go get him. Uh, if, you know, if Ange turns around and says no, then, yeah, it's mm. not a player we want. So I would trust – this is one where we've got to trust Ange's position on this one. If he wants mm. him, we get him. If, if he doesn't, then mm. we obviously ain't getting him. I mean, he's a youngish player as well. He's not very old, is he? He's only 23, 24, uh, isn't he? Yeah, I'm gonna say so. I mean, he fits that kind of system of what we're looking for. I mean, it's all right saying, you know, who does he replace? Sonny, the, again, Sonny, people like that. Perisic, they've only got, I mean, Sonny maybe a little bit more, but Perisic has only got one more season with us. So 
we've got to be looking at, at the future point, to get these players. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah, I forgot oh. about Perisic. Yes, yeah, good point. On that, though, that, that's for me something you can do next summer. For me, you've you got to look after your priorities right now, which are striker mm. and centre-back. Left wing with Perisic going next summer, you can look after that next summer because, you know, if you look after your striker and centre-back this, this summer, which I think are more important. Yeah, And can also I... we've got Brian Hill, who's not far away from recovery. He's probably about six weeks away from what I've gathered. I don't know if anyone can update me, but I heard by about early September, uh, sorry, early October, he should be ready to start again. And I personally think that the Brian Hill is a player that will absolutely smash this system. I, hear mm. yeah. I can't yeah. wait to get him back into this system. I, I, I think he's going to be absolute world worldy. So I agree yeah. with you, Dave, that, you know, buying wingers on the left-hand side are not necessarily um, as, as key as someone that can compete on the right. But I actually think Jota can play on both sides from, for what it's worth. I think he's, he's very adaptable. Mm. Um, a player that is certainly adaptable is the next one, and I think we've got three more players to get through before I let you guys go, is uh, Pepe. Uh, Mercado Azul has claimed that the agent of Porto winger Pepe is trying to find, quote, a solution for his client, who is the subject of interest mm. from Tottenham. Um, Ebola, I, I did a report on this, if you guys, uh, you can find it in my videos recently, revealed that Spurs presented an offer of 45 million euros up front, plus a further 15 in add-ons for Pepe, which was turned down by Porto. Um Obviously, we're still trying to find this, maybe still trying to look for it. I don't know if that's true, mm. but for what it's worth, I've spoken to some Portuguese people who told me that Abola is actually a genuinely reliable source of uh, footballing mm. kind of um, insight. So maybe it's true. This guy can play pretty much anywhere. Yeah. He can play on the right, he can play on the left, he can play through the middle. Um, really, really talented player. I, I really like him. I genuinely do. I think he's very, very, very cool as a player. Uh, can do a little bit of both on lo lo you know, low central gravity. If we're gonna, if we're gonna kind of resemble him to anybody at Club Tottenham Hotspur right now, it's probably gonna be Manuel Solomon. Um, don't know if we necessarily need a player that fits Manuel Solomon. If we're not even gonna play Manuel Solomon, but I wanted to get your take on it. I'll start with you, Dave. Yeah, look, uh, Pepe. You know, he, he can play anywhere across the forward line. Play up front, play left. He can play right. Scores goals, assists goals. Um, however. Again, I'm not sure he solves the problem for us. I get he can play through in the middle, but for me, it's not his strongest position. I think he's stronger on either flank. Um, so for me, again, I get it, but 45 million on positions we've already got stockpiled. I'm not so sure as wise from Tottenham Hotspur. However, he is a very, very good player. But, you know, when we uh, we were used by the Portuguese press, uh, uh, press for Luis Diaz to get his move to Liverpool, right? Tottenham went in there, put a bid in under the radar. Portuguese press released it when they shouldn't have, which alerted Liverpool, which meant they came in and they got our man in the end. Um, so it's sort of like on this one, I, I, I believe I've seen him linked with Arsenal for quite some time. I think he's linked with them last summer as well. For me, I think his agent is putting that out there to try and get one of the bigger clubs to come in for him. I don't think he'll end up at Tottenham Hotspur personally. Mm. Soren, uh, um, thoughts on this man? Kind of agree with Dave there. Um, that I don't see us getting him. I really don't. But I think there's, there's other players in that league that I'd rather get. I think you spoke about one the other day. Is it Gua I can't remember his bloody name. Gonchalves. Pedro um, Gonchalves. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd rather oh, see him. him. I'd rather was, see him. I don't, I don't think we're ever going to get him. I think they no, probably... No, we're not. But um, I don't see us getting, don't see us getting Pepe in either. So I, I think it's... A, it's, a, it's yeah. Like Dave just said, it's our oh, Tottenham are interested in this player... You know, let's get a bigger bid from somebody else. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, for what it's worth, Pedro Gonçalves, I don't know what he would cost. Um, and dealing with sporting at the last stages of a window is never easy. You, you need a whole window to deal with that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, unless we're already uh, doing it, unless we're already in talks with him and, and we're doing it under the radar, then it ain't going to happen now, is it? No. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And last of the rumours, guys, and then I'll let you guys go. We'll round off is uh, this particular man uh, is coming back up. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but Medi Taremi, he's, mm. he's an out and out nine. For all those people in the chat that are saying, why are we talking about wingers when we need a number nine? You've got one right here. This guy was a link with us about a month ago. Um, they were, apparently, we've been told now, according to, um, this is coming from, I forget the link. It wasn't a disingenuous one for what it's worth. Tottenham have been told they need to pay 30 million euros to sign a top striker target this summer. Um, 
Mehdi Taremi, listen, the guy the guy has got an incredible goal scoring record for Porto. Uh, he's a bit old, he's 31, been around 31, the block. Yeah. So, you know, you're not getting anyone with any particular sell on value, but you might get someone that can cover a bit of a stop gap. Um, the more I talk to people that are from that watch a bit of Portuguese football, because I don't watch Portuguese football that well that much. So, you know, I, I take my, my leanings from highlight views and videos and stuff. So, you know, don't I'm not certainly not an expert on him, but the guy apparently is, you know, very reminiscent to Harry Kane. He likes to play in the false nine. He comes deep. He picks the ball up. He's very good at spraying passes out to the left and to the right. He then turns around and gets himself back up to the to get on the end of it. You know, I don't necessarily think it's an absolute nightmare. I, I just it's unexciting, I guess. You know, you were saying earlier, Dave, about the fact that it's Evan Ferguson. If his name was Evani Ferguini or whatever, <laughs> everyone be all over him, right? I love that. <laughs> I think that this guy, Mehdi Tarami, the fact that he's from Iran, you know, the fact that he's 31, the fact that he's playing for Porto, it doesn't sound sexy. Mm. But maybe Tottenham don't need sexy all the time. Maybe maybe this guy could come in and do a job and pick up 12 to 15 goals mm. more than what Richarlison can deliver. And that could be the difference between finishing fourth or finishing sixth. Mm. And that in and of itself is worth... 50, 60, 70 million in, yeah. in, in funding. You know, uh, what's your thoughts on him, Dave? Yeah, I, he I hear you on that. Look, for me, Sean, I don't think Daniel Levy is going to sanction anywhere near 30 million for a 31 year old. Uh, when was the last time he's done that? You know, I think the last sort of old player we brought in here or in striker was Lorente, but he was brought in more or less for pittance. I definitely don't see Daniel Levy spending 30, uh, 30 million on a 31 year old. It doesn't make sense either to sell Harry Kane to bring in a guy that's older than him. And I think it goes against all the recruitment we've done over the last few years. And what Andrew right. Postacoglu said in his press conference, said uh, when asked about it the other day or last week, he sort of said, you know, we're purposely targeting younger players. You look at our recruitment under the Don Paratici, and no one can argue with me on that right now, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's, he, a lot of his signings have been 25 or under. So for me, that's the area that's the category we're sort of in and i don't think this one's going to happen personally all right fair enough I, I i'd be i'd be amazed if it did as well mm -hmm. um you know i just wanted to get your take on it and i'm playing devil's advocate i personally don't yeah. particularly want it to happen i think that we can do better elsewhere but uh, i thought i'd just hear your take on it and i want to hear as well um uh, sorens what's yours my man I, I just don't see the point look we're we're building a team now for not just this season, but for the next four, five, six years. Yeah. What's the point in get? I'd, I'd rather get, again, I'm just going to say the same name, Gift Orban. You know, somebody who we're going to take a risk on rather than somebody that's going to come in. Yeah, you know, he scored goals in Portugal and that, but he's 31. He's not the future of our football club. Let's build something to get excited about. We don't need a 31-year-old player up front Coming in now, we need somebody who's going to be hungry, somebody who wants to prove himself, somebody who we're going to take a risk on, somebody who's going to be a team player. It's not a 31-year-old. Let's If we're going to spend 30 million, then there are players out there that are going to be hungry. You know I mean? It just it, 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 If we get him, it stinks of that... You know, years have passed where we've we've gone for the cheap option, and I know it's the same price as it. But to me, we'd be better taking a risk on somebody for the future than another player just for this season. We've got enough of those now. Let's let's build something for the future. If we bring him in, all them shelves behind Siren will be empty. <laughs> uh, I tell you, I mean, look, it, it's I, I don't know. I mean. I, I, I'm, you know, I mean, Sean knows I, I'm, I'm positive about everything we do. I, I, I try not to be negative about anything. That would be the most negative signing. He might work. He might be brilliant. But I just feel as though it would be so depressing to suddenly go out and buy a 31-year-old that might score as a couple of girls. I'd rather take a chance and see what would you know we're, we're building for the future let's build for the future Let, let's let's get some passion in this team rather than somebody who's just a stop gap we, we, we've had enough stop gaps yeah 100 100 
Uh, look, we've gone through, I think, 10, 12 players there that are in the transfer links today. Remarkably, none of them really are centre-backs, apart from the ongoing story about Tosin. I think every, I've been looking at, into the chat. Everybody wants centre-backs as a priority, mm -hmm. and there just isn't any to, any new stories to talk about on that vein. So I have talked about with you guys, with you lovely boys, Dave and Soren, everything I can. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what um, what Drew Zilla's talking about. A giveaway for 300 li 350 likes. Uh, I love, absolutely love it, mate. I, I, I don't know where we're at with that. Um, but if we can get to 350 or wherever we can get to, I really appreciate it. I also want to say a massive, massive thank you to Soren, who doesn't have a link uh, to, uh, you, haven't got a, you haven't got a Twitter account of you, mate. Have you got a, uh, a Twitter? Yeah, I'm on the Twitter. Twitter. OCD Whiskey. OCD Whiskey yeah. uh, on Twitter. Soren's a wonderful guy. You can always find him on the Spurs Talk Show and also on Savage Show. Uh, Dave, um, mate, where can everyone find you? I put your link into. Uh, I'm gonna get OCD whiskeys up as well. But where can everyone find uh, find you, Dave? Yeah, I appreciate that, my man. Uh, yeah, everyone, you can find me over at the Irish Hotspur if you've enjoyed my contribution. Thanks very much for having me, Shani. I've enjoyed it, and Soren, great speaking to you, my man. I'm gonna follow you on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys yeah. have you guys never shared a stream before? I think well, we might have had, had, you know, long Dave had to go. As soon as I joined, he just ran away. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> it was all the two bombs you were spitting. I couldn't handle them, sorry. <laughs> um, listen, guys, we have got. Uh, let me get here. We go. OCD whiskey. You, you don't put the. Uh, you don't put the e, do you? In the thing. There you go. That's why. No. There is uh, OCD whiskey. If you want to share, if you want to get on touch, if you want to get in touch with um, with uh, with Twitter, you can find it. I have put the links in. Oh, you know what? I'm wondering whether or not the links are getting published because it's. Some reason uh, Streamyard has got my different YouTube name, and it might not be able to publish. I have been publishing the the Irish Hotspur, but United Spurs of America is doing it for me. Big up, Jacob. Listen, guys, we are going to leave it there. Lay off the booze, Soren. Oh yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's, he likes it. He, he's not. He's like me. We like a drink. <laughs> we like it. He just leaves it most. If I lived in where you are, Soren, then those bottles would all be three quarters empty. <laughs> oh, they're all in the other room. All the other oh, rooms. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> Yeah. That's the this is the investment, and behind that you've got the party room that aren't behind the side. I love yeah, it. Believe, believe me, that is the part. There's even a bed in there ready for when you can't get any further. <laughs> <laughs> good, good times. Listen, guys, we're going to leave it there. Um, in 45 minutes' time, uh, Savage Show, the Football Heritage is on. So get over there. I will be on that show a little bit later. I've got to sort out some family stuff first, but I'll be on the start this evening. But right now, I'm going to leave you in the lovely hands. I'm going to redirect you over to um, Alan. Clark from Time Added On. So if you're looking for more Tottenham content for the, to fill you up for the next 45 minutes or for however long he goes for, then you can find it. Stay where you are. And when you get over there, make sure you put in Spurs Talk Show Raid to let him know where all you 580 people have come from. Big up, Dave. Really appreciate you, my man. Get over to the Irish Hotspur. Big up, Soren. Uh, big up. Get over to OCD Whiskey on Twitter. I love you all. Thanks, everyone, for, for hanging around uh, for the afternoon. And we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys. And as always, come on, you Spurs.